I sometimes do this thing where I convince myself that I would just lie down in my bed for a minute and then I fall asleep for an hour or two. That happened about two hours ago. Um, and I decided that I will not get up. So um, luckily I had my camera in reach and uh, my computer is on my nightstand right behind the camera. So I will do this from here. Um, topic of today's vlog is sharing worlds. That is um, one group in one world and multiple game masters um, who are playing when they are not game mastering. I know that this is frowned upon in a lot of groups and uh, common in others and um, both fractions have uh, pretty good arguments I have to say and I've encountered both fractions and yeah I have to say I really like having multiple game masters uh, in, in one setting. Um, it is a really different experience um, seeing um, a world from the player's perspective and seeing it from the game master's perspective and um, having them both is a really nice uh, opportunity. And I, um, as, as, as much as I like game mastering, I also like playing um, and so um, I, I really like to, to switch the um, positions uh, around a little bit in there. Um, the obvious thing that you need is um, a game master, if you are the lead game master, uh, or in, in any case, um, game masters um, that um, you have the same concept of what this group should be. Um, one friend of mine especially um, is a really, really good game master, I have to say, but he tends to become a little megalomaniac. Um, in his sets, uh, in his games, everything is big and powerful and flashy and whatnot, and he tends to throw a lot of money at the player characters, but then uh, build up the, uh, the um, opposition even, even bigger, and yeah... Um, that can ruin a game really, really fast. Um, it works for him because he's willing to to amp up everything to eleven. Um, but if um, you you let him loose on one of your worlds where the appeal of a group um, can be to be the underdog and um, or where the appeal of a group is to be the underdog and to be constantly overworked and under underfunded. Um, that can pretty much ruin the whole group and that has happened and I don't let him lose on my groups anymore um, except for uh, when I give him very very tight guidelines um, and that works then so but generally that is to be avoided um, another thing is you well you are there as the main game master or the main game master is there for you so if there really should be something that uh, the game master is doing wrong or um, that um, the the uh, game master who's who's at charge right now doesn't want to decide because it kind of acts over in the in the bigger context of the world um, you can just uh, put down your gamer head for a minute and or your player head for a minute and uh, just become the game master again for for a while that shouldn't happen too often um, <laughs> because you are uh, after all uh, the whole idea is one of the ideas is to to get you a little a little playtime um, but um, you can do that most definitely um, another good idea is to, to um, as I said, give guidelines and say, okay, um, this adventure is happening in this region or uh, within these circles and your, this is your responsibility, everything else is my responsibility and you can end up with two, three, four, five game masters in one group and everybody has um, their NPCs and their areas of expertise and um, uh, yeah, if, as long as you, you keep these a little uh, bit from a little bit separate from each other um, that can work out really really good um, we've been playing for years in a very loose Shadowrun group of about 15 people and it wasn't one group it were very spontaneous groups that played at least once a week um, in, in different uh, combinations and sometimes parallel and every player had one or two characters and about half of the people involved were also game masters so these uh, Shadowrun adventures pretty much all happened in the same context um, and um, we usually
usually at least the game masters informed each other what had been happening in some groups with certain characters. You so you could potentially encounter a um, your your arch and en, en, uh, arch enemy uh, arch nemesis NPC um, that you made uh, with another game master in another group suddenly uh, a week later um, in in a completely different group with a completely different game master because the game master had been talking to each other, and that was a really fun experience, I have to say. Um, has its downsides, obviously. Um, you have to deal with this crew up of other game masters. Um, you will um, give up cont creative control all over your world, um, and I personally don't have a problem with that at all. Um, but um, yeah, if you if you really like this tight control, it's not for you. But you should probably try it. Um, one problem is uh, what to do with uh, the character that the game, the now game master, had has um, has uh, played up to that point, and uh, uh, what to how to get another play character in the group. I'm not a friend of sharing characters. Sharing NPCs is and le letting NPCs played, uh, uh, having NPCs played by different game masters is difficult enough, I would say. Um, but uh, sharing player characters so that there's kind of one game master character if it's only two game masters and there's that one gets handed uh, no don't do that um, <laughs> there's some things that you don't share and among them <laughs> are characters I would say um, so um, there's well, with Shadowrun it's obviously not a problem. Um, different runner gets hired for the job and that's it. Um, also for a lot of um, um, uh, adventures and um, yeah, gen generally uh, modern times adventures, um, yeah, somebody may have another job or uh, may have to deal with something within the family or whatever and you can pretty much make up every, every excuse that you need uh, to get a character out of the group. And um, yeah, if you if they really have a skill set that the group relies on, and it is necessary to to call them and and get their help or something, you can do that. Um, the game master, who is also the player of that character, shouldn't have a problem with uh, running the character as an NPC a little bit. Um, and if it uh, becomes annoying or uh, too much, the game master can always say, yeah, okay, you don't reach my character. That's it. Too bad for you. Um, you didn't pay any points for it yourself. No, no right to reach to, to reach my character. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's one thing you can do um, in traveling adventures. The classic fantasy setting. It's a little more difficult, but you can usually make it work and just say, okay, um, I've encountered this interesting thing, and I will investigate this and stay here and study for a month, and then we'll meet up again, and I will go out to adventuring with you again. Um, not a big problem usually. Um, in groups where you have a lot of reoccurring NPCs, it's really easy for a game master to find a character because there's usually a few NPCs that you really like and that you can see as a player character for yourself and that you can make with the same rules you use to make a player character. So you can just do it. Um, you should try to get that character out of the group as soon as you start uh, game mastering because it... it as I said, you, you become pretty attached to some NPCs and it's usually a good thing to, to keep your distance a little bit and that's exactly what you don't want to do if you start playing this NPC as a player character. So, um, yeah, for, from that on, it is this, this character is pretty much burnt as an NPC and uh, should be removed from the group uh, as soon as you start Game Mastering again. Um, yeah, I think those were the points I wanted to make. I'm sorry if this was really unstructured. As I said, I just woke up again. Um, and it was a pretty long day. All fun I had pretty much was uh, um, getting into a fight with Farlander in the comments of the last video. Not a fight yet, um, but I hope it will become one. Um, I'm looking at you, Farlander. Um, so, um, read up on, on, on that if you like. Um, also, uh, like the video if, if you like it, and um, leave a comment um, telling me how bad my hair looks or whatever. And, um, yeah, uh, come to the Geek and Sundry forums for some long form uh, discussion um, or uh, watch some of the great other shows on the Geek, or for Geek Alliance if you have the time. Um, 
I'm in my other place now. I switched towns today, and uh, that's part of why it was a pretty long day. And um, I um, will be in the lab a little bit this week, so it might be that tomorrow and there will be no new uh, RPG vlog, but a video um, featuring industrial robots on my personal channel. Um, I'm not sure of that yet, so if you don't see a video um, tomorrow here, um, check out my personal channel, uh, link in the video description here, and uh, see if uh, there's something for you there, and uh, these will definitely return. Um, I'm not sure when. Maybe I will make a video tomorrow, I don't know. Okay, um, so, um, damn it, I have to pee, uh, so I have to get up. I have to get up. Um, that has nothing to do with anything. Um, see you. <laughs>